This is your local election headquarters. All right, welcome back to This Week in Louisiana Politics from your local election headquarters. I'm joined by Secretary of State candidate Kyle Ardwan. He is currently the acting Secretary of State, and you've been at the office in one juncture or another for the better part of eight years now, and obviously that's a big um, campaign message that you hope to send in, that you know the ins and outs of the office, and um, I guess ready to hear your side of things. What do you hope to bring? That's right. I hope to bring the uh, stability that I've brought over the last uh, 100 plus days uh, acting as secretary. Uh, you know, I'm constitutionally appointed, so mm -hmm. people put interim and acting, but irregardless, I am the secretary of state. Uh, the buck stops with me at this point in time, and uh, it's been a really good opportunity to um, reevaluate how things are going in the office and preparing for the uh, upcoming elections. Uh, we have been working really hard hard on the cybersecurity issues and those fr those fronts to make certain that the votes are accurate and secure and we feel good about that and uh, we're moving forward on it. And your decision to jump into the race obviously with qualifying was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week. Correct. Um, three days to sort of see who comes in and, and decides to jump into the race and your decision to run you had announced your entry with about 10 minutes left um, in, in qualifying, but what, what Give or take, yeah. right exactly? Um, <laughs> so, what was your um, your thought? Had you made the decision before those 10 minutes, or what? Uh, I guess what made you? No, I, in? I had not made a final decision. Um, I will tell you that I'd been getting calls from appointed elected officials all across the state, I had friends, family, uh, people who interact with the office on a regular basis, um, just feeling like you know you really ought to do this. So. Uh, I visited with my wife, we prayed about it, um, and this is all that last day because even that morning um, I, I felt like I was okay with my decision. Um, you but not to run. To not to run, Initially, but yes. um, the, the calls just, my phone just blew up after um, the morning time. And so we had a Skype call with our daughter as well, and she, she put it to me, she said, Dad. You're already doing the job. You know it better than anybody. Why wouldn't you do this? So that was a lot to think about. I called my uh, pastor at St. Aloysius, and we visited over the phone, prayed about it, talked about it. Um, he offered me some suggestions uh, in my discernment process. And then uh, the next step was I got back on the phone with my wife. We talked about it some more, prayed about it again. And then I said, okay, I just need some time by myself. And so I did that. And I felt very convicted to do it. So here I am, irregardless of what the others think. Uh, people change their minds all the time. The fact of the matter is, we've got a lot going on in the office. Uh, we've got a lot of tough priorities that we have to face, especially the implementation of new equipment. Whoever takes over for Secretary of State, um, the moment they take over, we are heading into qualifying for another set of elections in the spring. Um, we, we perform those elections and then we have the gubernatorial elections and the re-election effort of that individual. So, you know, there's really a lot going on and I don't think it's time for on-the-job training. I feel very convicted about this. I feel very comfortable about my decision. I hope voters will understand that, you know, we all uh, for various reasons, at the times we make decisions, but as things change over time, of course, new circumstances come about, and I feel like I've made the right decision. I want to get to uh, obviously, you know, your time under Secretary of Shedler. Um, there are some controversies that had arisen um, toward the end of his his time, and just sort of giving you a chance to discuss that sure. in, in your view, if you don't mind. Um, campaigns can get pretty brutal. Yeah, I mean, your <laughs> chief elections officer, you know how they go. Right. Um, are you ready for your opponents in this race, um, be it accurately or not, are you ready for them to try connecting you to what had happened with uh, Secretary of State Chedler allegedly and um, one of his employees at the time? Well, I think anybody's going to say or do anything. They're going to make accusations. It's a political campaign. Am I ready for that? Sure, because I know what the truth is from my perspective. Um, the good Lord knows the truth. I'm going to speak about the truth from my perspective. I have to be very careful because the litigation is still ongoing. Um, but I can tell you this. Prior to the um, lawsuit being filed, and I've said this publicly before, I knew nothing 
about this situation. It had never been reported to me. It is a travesty that this occurred. Um, it, it should never have occurred. Had it been reported to me, I would have acted re immediately. I've done so in the past. I have enacted, prior to the secretary, the previous secretary leaving, I enacted a new policy, a very strong policy. It's the strongest one in the state to date in, in any state agency of, uh, against sexual harassment and the new processes and procedures that we use to report it and investigate it. And uh, I'm going to continue down that route. Uh, everybody should be free from harassment in their uh, workplace. Um, this is a tremendous place to work. I'm very proud of the employees. I'm very proud of the agency. And this may be a stain, a temporary temporary stain, but it does not impact the uh, work that we do on a regular basis. It can't because we're here to make sure that the elections are done fairly and accurately. Uh, and I feel for, for the, the individual in this, she's still employed in our office um, and you know, as far as I know, she is doing the job that she has always wanted to do and, and is doing it well. All right.